Targaryen cannot be trusted. Now that we've all absorbed Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 2, Stormborn, let's take a look at some of the Easter eggs and things you might have missed along the way. The wall runs across the stretch of land between the Far North and the Regular North, which you can clearly see in the opening credits. Back in Season 1, the wall was stopped by water on both sides. One extra watchful Redditor pointed out that now that winter has come in Season 7, you can already see that the sea is freezing over on the sides of the wall. Forget about needing to tear the wall down, the Night King and his army can simply go around it. Is that what they were doing in Bran's vision from the season premiere? In the crypts below Winterfell, Jon Snow rewarded Littlefinger's arrogance with a move we've seen before. While we might still be on a high after the Stark victory in the Battle of the Bastards, it's important to remember we can't underestimate Littlefinger. The man who betrayed Ned Stark, ultimately costing him his life, and betrayed Sansa, selling her to the Boltons and allowing her to be continually raped and abused. He's not a man to be trusted, but he's also not a man to be crossed without a second thought. Jon Snow had better be careful if he doesn't want to end up like Ned. Last week, we marveled at how Sansa has started styling her hair a la Cersei season 1 and is emulating her manipulative ways. It makes sense, given that Cersei was basically responsible for Sansa's stilted upbringing for most of her adolescence. Much like how Sansa grew up under Cersei's wicked wing, Arya spent a formative year with Sandor the Hound Clegane, learning to be a brutal killer and to expect the absolute worst from people. You can see the Hound reflected clearly in the way Arya greedily and rudely snatches food from Hot Pie's tray, at first unable to muster any sort of emotion for her old companion. Arya is pure hound, expressionless, ornery, selfish. Mm. Luckily, it doesn't look like she'll be that way forever, as her cold exterior cracks open as soon as Hot Pie mentions Jon Snow and Winterfell. Is your brother right? I'm not writing a chronicle of the wars following the death of King Robert I, so it can sit on a shelf unread. These wars following Robert's rebellion are the wars that have been keeping us entertained since season one. What? You don't like the title? When Sam suggests making the title something more poetic, it's a nod to an underrated fan theory that the entire story of Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire is actually being narrated by Samwell Tarly. Could it be that Samwell Tarly will decide to write the more poetic version of events that we're watching or reading now? When Nymeria breaks our hearts for the second time by turning her back on Arya, the youngest Stark daughter says after her, while it might at first seem that she's referring to the now wild direwolf no longer being the pet she remembered, it's slightly more nuanced than that. Back in season one, Ned Stark tells his daughter that one day she'll marry a nobleman and have lots of children. Arya replies, That's not me. Meaning she'd rather be wild and free than trapped in a cage, even if it is just a metaphorical one. Like Arya, being tame and domesticated just isn't Nymeria. One of the major pitfalls of converting a 5 plus volume book series into a TV show is that there simply isn't time to fit in every interesting detail in the show. For instance, in the books, it is known that Euron Greyjoy's own ship, Silence, is so called because he cuts out the tongues of every single member of his crew. One of these crew members, both mute and bald, is known as Kragorn. Is that who we see here shaking his head at Ilaria's plea for a mercy killing? Book readers will also remember that Kragorn was the crewman that blew the magical dragonbinder horn, proclaiming Euron's right to the Iron Isles. Blowing the horn killed Kragorn, and when a maester performed an autopsy, he discovered his lungs were charred and blackened. If the show version of Euron is in possession of dragonbinder, would he even be able to use it? Euron. What would Game of Thrones be without the brilliant score of Ramin Djawadi? Most main characters in the show have their own theme song, and now we get a little taste of Euron Greyjoy's. Once Euron bursts onto the scene, we can hear faintly in the background the frantic drum beats and ominous melody that we first heard back when he was crowned King of the Iron Isles. The original tune, Coronation, is muted somewhat and dragged out in places with long, low sounds of strings. These grave notes stuck into Coronation seem like sinister nods to another villain's theme, Ramses. Maybe it's a good thing Theon decided to jump ship after all. 